Why is there concerted interest? Is it because a bunch of wealthy folks are particularly worried about educational outcomes for children? Or is it because there's a really nice market opportunity? Which side are you on? Which side are you on? David, let's talk about this other... There, there's some more stuff going on in Texas. and. Yeah. Um, and, and there's another connection to Alabama here, and that's with this uh, push for school privatization. Um, mm -hmm. Alabama just introduced in the uh, House of Representatives a uh, quote unquote school choice bill. It's just meant to, you know, suck uh, public funds fr uh, from public schools and funnel it into the pockets of you know, wealthy individuals and CEOs of private schools. Uh, but it's it's a pretty expansive bill. And uh, there was something similar introduced in Texas that I saw was voted down in the Texas State House, but you said that it might not be quite as cut and dry as as maybe mm -hmm. I had thought. So can you explain what's going on with, with Texas and, and vouchers and privatization and, and where that's at over there? Yeah, again, um, so basically... Um a lot of this, I mean, one, this is something that the Republicans in, in Texas have wanted to do for a while. And it's actually, it's one of those things that national Republicans or people within the Republican Party, you know, sort of ask themselves, like, why is Texas sort of behind um, other Republican run states on school privatization? Um, right. Texas has had majorities of Republicans for my entire life, pretty much. Um and uh, this is a very clear attempt, I find, from Abbott to try to shore up, again, a, a presidential run because he knows he'll get asked in Iowa whether or not he tried and fought hard enough for school privatization. Um, and there was a lot of questions about how far it would be able to get because it's been tried a few times and it's often, you know, and it gets blocked. Not because there's a lot of Democrats who have ability to stop it. Um, it's because there's a lot of division within even the Republican Party in the state of Texas, particularly between Republicans who represent districts like um, areas like Travis County, Harris County, Dallas, right? Like these major these these larger cities and rural Republicans, because um, and I reckon it's probably the similar thing in Alabama. Um, you know, in a lot of these rural areas, um, when the, you know, the schools are important culturally and socially for people, but they're also important for people is people's employment, right? I mean, that's like a, a place that you can go and get a job, you know, maybe as, as a teacher or as a support staff, administrative staff, et cetera. Um, so it's a very important economic engine in, in particularly a lot of rural parts of Texas and, you know, rural parts of Texas are rural. Um, you know, so there's always been a lot of, uh, pushback on this and, um, you know, fights, you know, about things, for example, like what will happen to football teams? I mean, like that's a big deal in the state. But um, effectively, um, all of the Republicans have been being lobbied extremely hard. There's been a lot of money spent on this issue. And um, the way that these th this privatization effort is sort of being uh, led is that it would set up effectively. Uh, they're called Evis, um, education savings accounts. So each student who's already in a public school would have a set of money that's attached to them um, that they could take to their public school or they could take to a private school. The problem here um, is that um, what that will do is, one, take money out of the public system. Two, we'll bring more money from the public system into the private system and the religious school system. Um, and also, it's not a doorway for most uh, working class Texans, um, you know, of school age to go to a private school because the education savings accounts aren't enough money to pay for tuition at the nice, fancy private schools that we have in this state. On top of that, again, if you're in Travis County, if you're in Houston, if you're in San Antonio, if you're in Dallas, you have some options, right? You subsidize a few thousand dollars a year. You send your kid to a, a private school. You get some money from the state to do that. Not really the case in a lot of rural Texas, uh, um, you know, that they have like tremendous amounts of private schools around them. So effectively, it would be lessening the amount, um, lowering the amount of money that'd be going to some of these rural schools. Um, um, while effectively just subsidizing wealthy families who were already probably going to take their kids and pay full tuition to private schools, mm -hmm. uh, take money out of the public system and basically pay into the private system. Um, politically, what's happened is it went through the Texas Senate, 
But in the Texas House, there has been, um, you know, some pushback and there was some pushback in the Senate, but ended up passing in in the House. Effectively, what they did is they attached um, a amendment to a larger bill that they that they're pushing through that basically said that they the state budget won't fund school voucher, a school voucher system. But that's not a final bill. And it's going to go back to the um, and the Senate can basically um, do a lot to sort of weaken that and then it'll return to the House where it, it seems pretty. I mean, I don't want to make predictions here um, because Texas politics moves really fast sometimes. Um, but effectively, um, what that signaling is, what, what that vote was saying is that a lot of rural Republicans aren't happy with the way that the language of the school voucher program is currently set up. They want to get more, um, you know, concessions, more promises of how much funding will go to some of those rural schools um, and, and and things of, of that nature. So this is such a big priority for the Republican Party that I sort of um, I wouldn't be too optimistic that that uh, House amendment is basically the end of the. Um, the the school voucher push a lot of the smarter people who i talk about who follow the ledger really closely think that there will be some, in some form or another um some form of school vouchers that will go to uh abbott's desk um during the session and uh you know he has obviously been pushing for it and has pledged uh, to sign it so it's not done um but it's also not blocked um despite i mean hell I'll, you know just for many i was excited when i saw that that news too friend you know what i mean um yeah yeah well and, and, and you know sorry it's like and the way that it's set up is really wild too because like you know there there's like there's a lot of pushes to say that you can also take that money for home homeschooling to just sort of there's been some proposals that basically it's just like this is just money right and that's yeah. more like the alabama version that's being discussed it's very open-ended yeah, yeah I you mean, can just take money and do whatever you want with it, right? So it's like you're taking money out of the public school. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's really, um, um, you know, egregious. And as somebody who, you know, went to Texas public schools, I mean, it's it's worrying um, because, like, you know, Texas has some really great schools. It also has a lot of underfunded um, schools. And the reason that these things are, are so nasty, um, apart from maybe some of the things that, like, I think that as a society, it's a good thing to educate children. I think it's actually something we should be proud of. Right. That we provide that to children. Right. And we should want to provide the best education to our kids and the next generation. The way that this is set up it basically will pull more and more money out of underfunded, poor working class communities and will super fund the already really, really well off communities in Texas. Right. And I don't know. That's Which... not something that I can get behind. Yeah, and it only feeds that cycle, right? Because the more the public schools are underfunded, the more demand you have for voucher programs, right? The more legitimate grievances people will have, the more families will, will look for alternatives. It's a, it's a really vicious cycle where the public schools that are meant to serve, yes, predominantly working class communities are sabotaged from the inside out. Uh, while, yes, funneling public dollars from the public treasury into private pockets. It's uh, and, you know, just disturbing adding to that. Just you know, right now, like there's a massive teacher shortage in the state mm -hmm. of Texas. Teachers have have seen, um, you know, significant war on, on their wages and livelihood and life. I mean, you know, quite literally. Um, and the, the kind of weasel word that you're hearing from a lot of the Texas GOP right now, um, people who are supporting it, is that every school in Texas will be fully funded. Right. But again, what does fully funded mean? Right. Does that mean that the funding is going to lower? Right. I mean, like that fits in that that kind of. Yeah, because like um, when has it ever been fully funded, you know, by like a legitimate measurement of needs? Yeah, no, they're just they're just. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah. So fu fully funded could mean literally anything. One of the big advocates and you know, lobbyists, what we call them, what they are, has been using Obama's uh, Obamacare line. Um, which is like, if you like your public school, you can keep it. Um, but honestly, like, I don't think you can like generally make that 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 promise to people. No, um, you can't. Looking at, at looking at some of the proposals that have been laid out, and looking at some of the consequences that are very likely to come from this. Right. Exactly. And and that's the uh, the consequences that are going to come from this. The that is something that is inc that is so so frustrating to me um, when I see 
people falling for this um because mm-hmm. you know I, I think that there's there are like just normal working families and i think this will actually kind of lead into the next conversation but there, the, there's working families they want their children to be well educated and they're being mm-hmm. sold this bill of goods that oh if we have competition in the education marketplace we're going to empower you as consumers of education and it's ultimately not only is it going to give you more choice and you're going to be able to maybe take your kid to this fancy ass private school but it'll also make the public schools better because they're going to have to compete with these fancy ass Mm -hmm. private schools in a way that they don't have to right now and so they say all these things and they try to make um working class people they try to convince working folks that privatization is actually going to increase educational outcomes in their communities but they and they and they make all these all these fancy hypothetical arguments and they they talk in you know highfalutin uh you know up in the clouds language but we the the thing that's frustrating to me and it, and we know why right is that they never ever point to results they never do that they because they can't because it's not as if we exist uh we are floating alone in the ether in alabama as a state we are not Mm -hmm. the only people who have ever existed and there are states in this country that have implemented exactly the same kind of programs that you're talking about in texas and that they're talking about in alabama and we can just we can just look at the results and they're not good (laughs) they're, <laughs> they're they're not good. We've talked about how, you know, you said that that um it's going to funnel money into people that are already into the pockets of wealthy people that are already sending their kids to private schools. That's not a hypothetical. Maybe this is going to happen. Maybe that's not. We can look at the results. 70 to 80 percent of these funds go to parents who are already sending their kids to private schools. It's not increasing choice. It's just funneling money into their pockets. We can also look at the educational outcomes. They do not increase in public schools in states where this is tried. And they do not actually even increase the educational outcomes of people who utilize these vouchers by and large, Mm -hmm. which is a crazy statistic. But that's it's been studied and we can see that. But they're not. But these advocates, these lobbyists who are paid by you know, these interests that are interested in, in enriching their friends who are sending their kids to private schools or who maybe are interested themselves. in, in yeah, in, in owning private schools themselves. Yeah. Uh, they, <laughs> they're trying to like, convince that's the thing is like, let's, like, let's be clear about this. This is, this is saying that right now we have a, a you know, generally public, we have, you know, generally public system in, in, in this country where, you know, majority of kids are going to public schools. Um, and you know, there's people who want to make money off of that process. And, well, how can I start making money off of children's education? Well, we get rid of public schools and we increase the amount of money that's going to private interest, right? Like this is like beyond like what it means for educational outcomes. Like let's always like, you know, you got to follow the money. Why is there concerted interest? Is it because a bunch of wealthy folks are particularly worried about educational outcomes for children? Or is it because there's a really nice market opportunity? If you have a massive state like Texas, you know, basically funding a lot of private opportunities that you can grip and grab off. You just saw a clip from the Valley Labor Report. We are live every Saturday morning from 930 a.m. till 1230 p.m. And we pride ourselves on keeping all of our content free to everybody so that we can talk to as many working folks as possible. If you support the work that we're doing, you think that it's important, you think that it's good, then consider making a monthly contribution to the project. And you can do that on our website, tvlr.fm.